you're probably wondering what's happening here. With all of these intelligent villagers holding on to some sort of advanced ancient technology, whilst, well, dying in the nether. As, what is that technology? Why are they in the nether? And what happens next? Well, to answer all of those questions, we need to go back in time, just a few decades. Our strange story begins at the end of another. More specifically, at the end of the greatest civilization ever known to the overworld. Now, this civilization once ruled the overworld with their highly advanced technology, and they had billions of inhabitants. But this impressive empire would eventually crumble. As one day, a monstrosity was released onto the world, and when it did, Billions were killed, and the cities were sent into a state far beyond repair. As for those very few that were lucky enough to escape and survive, well, they were sent back tens of thousands of years, losing all of their great technology. Well, that's what happened with most of that empire, as the intellectuals, who were the smartest amongst their entire civilizations, and were the ones creating all this new technology, didn't die. In fact, they thrived in this time as they, unlike everyone else, lived in bunkers underneath the city, as that's where they created their new technology in secret. And so that's why when that monster rose and killed most of that civilization, they were safe. However, at the same time, many of them knew this wouldn't last forever, and so because of that, together all the intellectuals began to develop a brand new offensive technology. Their hope was that with this new offensive tech, they could fight back against that monstrosity, because eventually their defences would fall. And well, very luckily for those intellectuals, they could develop their new technology using parts of their attacker, as one of them had somehow been able to bring a dormant sulk vein with them into the bunker. And so it was because of that skulk vein that these intellectuals were able to run some tests on the attacker to see what gave it all this power that allowed it to overwhelm their civilization. And what they ended up discovering shocked them all, as they discovered that this skulk was powered by souls. This was shocking news for everyone in that bunker, as soul powered technology had been thought of as impossible for decades. But clearly, it must be possible, as that evil skulk was using it against them. And so it was over the next 50 years that the intellectuals worked tireless nights trying to create this new offensive technology using soul powers that could hopefully rival that of the skulk. And well, it did take them a while, and what they ended up creating wasn't originally what they wanted, but they did end up creating something very powerful, as they ended up with the Netherite Upgrading Template. And the powers of this template was that it could soulbound a Netherite ingot to a Diamond Tool, which would make that Diamond Tool much stronger, much more dangerous, and much more durable, and it would even make it fire resistance. And so it was quite a powerful piece of tech, and the intellectuals were hoping on using this netherite upgrading template on all of their tools and armour, because it would hopefully allow them to fight back against the skulk and to reclaim their cities. But there was a slight problem with all of that, and that was that to use this template, they needed netherite ingots, and at that moment, netherite ingots were in very low supply, as they were only found in the nether, and in the bunkers, they only had a few. And so it was because of that, they just couldn't possibly upgrade all of their tools and armour, and so even though the technology worked extremely well, it just wasn't going to be able to be used. And so it was because of that failure of that first technology that they began to work on a new, dumbed down version of the netherite template, one that didn't require such rare materials. And I'll get into more detail of that tech later, but for now, all you need to know is that they were called the Armor Drims. And that they were almost completed when it finally happened. The Warden got into the bunker. Chaos quickly spread all throughout the bunker as the intellectuals attempted to grab as many of those technological pendants as possible before fleeing, as they just weren't prepared to fight at that moment. Now, many got lucky and were able to escape to the surface of the overworld. 
but those that went to grab the netherite upgrade templates didn't get that opportunity, as they had to run right to the end of the bunker, which when they did and were able to pick many of them up, the warden chased after them, and it blocked off the exit. And so all of those intellectuals that went to pick up those pendants they were now forced to make a choice. They either had to escape to the deadly nether and would likely die there, or would just have to stay here and probably die. And well, most of them opted for option A, as the warden was ruthless. And so they began running to the nether portal. And so it was over the next few minutes that hundreds of these intellectuals carrying the upgrade pendants escaped to the deadly nether. It may have been dangerous here, but at least they were safe from the skulk now. Right? They were safe, weren't they? Well, no, as the skulk began to travel through the nether portals and began to corrupt the nether. This was bad, very bad, as they were all going to die now and there was no escape. But then one of the intellectuals had an idea and shouted it out to everyone. Just break the portals! And so not knowing what else to do, they did just that. And it worked, as without the skulk being connected to that main overworld host, it quickly died off in the nether. But now the intellectuals had another problem, and that was that they were now stuck here in the nether, as those portals that they had just broken were their only way of getting back to the overworld. But still, the intellectuals had hope that there was another way to get back to the overworld, and so, clinging on to that hope, the intellectuals decided to build a small fortress where they could live temporarily, just so that they could survive in the harsh conditions of the nether. And it took a few hours of hard work, but it was a success, and the fort was complete. And so, they were safe. But more than just being safe, they also created a room in this fort where they could continue to experiment on their technology, as, after all, they were going to be in the nether for quite some time, and they might as well capitalise on that opportunity to experiment where the netherite was. And so it was over those next few weeks that all went well in that fort, and morale was high for the intellectuals, as they had been able to convert plenty of diamond tools with so much more netherite, as it was just so common in the nether. However, this short reign of peace would be over very quickly, as it was only a few days after that point that a flock of ghasts appeared above their fortress. Now keep in mind, none of the intellectuals had ever seen a ghast before, and so because of that, they were uncertain if it was a threat, and so because of that, many of them got into defensive positions on the top of their fort, with their bows drawn, ready to attack. But Luckily, at first, all the ghasts continued to just be harmless, as they were just floating there above the fort. But that would all change when one of the intellectuals accidentally let go of his bow and shot with it. He didn't mean to do that, but by the time the arrow had left his bow, it was too late, as that arrow struck a ghast right in the centre of its face and killed it instantly. And so, instantly, all the ghasts turned hostile and began shooting at the fort, which, as it wasn't blast resistant or fire resistant, blew up and caught fire. And so that room where all the netherite upgrade templates were stored was destroyed, and the templates that weren't destroyed in that fire or weren't blown up fell down to the lava ocean below, which destroyed them all. Meanwhile, all the intellectuals were running around frantically, trying to avoid the gas blasts, and, well, many of them were unsuccessful, as they just couldn't run fast enough, and so many of them died. But quickly, those that weren't dying formed military formations and began shooting back at the ghasts, and well, as they were quite weak, it didn't take all that long for them to be killed. But the damage had already been done, and thousands were killed, and the environment around their fort was destroyed. And so, after the attack was completely over, all the intellectuals attempted to unite back with each other to see what they needed to do next. However, they couldn't unite with each other, as the ghasts had blown up the thin natural bridge 
the connected, the intellectuals. And so it's because of that that the intellectuals have been split into two groups. Now, they all wanted to unite back together as one, but they just couldn't at that moment, as so there was just no way that they could jump over that border without, well, falling in the lava and dying. And so they shouted out to each other to just follow down the lava ocean bitches, and we should be able to reunite with each other on the other side of this giant lava ocean. And so both groups left the burnt remains of their fortress and began walking. And they both thought that this should only take a few days before they unite and everything will be fixed. And well, let's just say that will never happen. But for now, let's get back to the story and focus on the first group. Now, this first group had quite the struggle moving across the nether ocean, as the areas that they had to walk through had a great variety in height, and so because of that, it was very difficult to move around, as they had to scale both hills and valleys. Also, at the same time, many of the intellectuals in this first group were those that worked the hardest on creating those netherite upgrade pendants, and as they had all been destroyed in that attack, their morale was very low and many of them just didn't want to keep fighting this battle to survive. But still, they pushed forward, and it was only a few days later that they encountered something strange. Very strange, in fact, as they had just found a giant fortress. That was not normal, as there should not be any buildings here, as according to all the research that they had done so far in the nether, there were no signs of any intelligent life. So, who built that fortress? And so now, hyped up and curious, those intellectuals went into that fortress to investigate. However, when they got inside, it looked abandoned, like it was built hundreds of years ago, and then the construction had suddenly stopped for some reason. It was very strange. But when they turned a corner, they quickly found out that this place was not abandoned, as when they turned that corner, they came face to face with hundreds of evil entities. More specifically, those were the entities that lived here in that fortress. And well, let's just say they weren't too fond of these invaders in their home. And so, they attacked. Now, some of the intellectuals tried to run away, whilst others tried to fight back, but they couldn't run fast enough, and they couldn't fight back strong enough. And so, because of that, they were all killed in minutes. But when they died, something very strange was revealed, as it turns out that many of the intellectuals that had come to the nether had brought with them that incomplete technology that they were working on. And so it was only when they died that secret was revealed, as there were now hundreds of those incomplete technology pendants just lying there on the ground. To the Willard Skeletons, they were very confused, but still, they decided to pick up these magical pendants to see what they were. But after they picked them all up, they began to glow and shake and then they changed form. And so, they became the Rib Trim. This scared the Wither Skeletons and everyone else as they had no idea what just happened or why it had happened. And so quickly, they all decided to just look all these rib trims in their chest, as they didn't know what they could do next. And well, as no one else ever came back to those fortresses, they're still there, sitting in those chests, today. But now, on to that other group. Hopefully, they won't suffer as much as that first group. And well, they didn't, at first. In fact, to begin with, at the start of their travels, they thrived, as they went through the mostly flat plains of the Crimson Forest. And so, because of that, they were able to travel the nether very quickly. So much so that it was only a few days before they reached the other side of that lava ocean. And as they did so, they were in very high spirits. However, when they reached the other side of that lava ocean, there was no sign of that other group. Now, they were almost expecting this, as they could see that they did have a very easy route. And so, because of that, they just thought that the other group must have had much harder terrain. And so, they decided to just 
continue onwards, thinking that they should be able to intercept the other group on their way. But after a few days, still nothing. That was wrong. They should have found them by now. It couldn't be that hard to travel the nether. And so they continued to just keep going, but as they did, they were getting increasingly concerned as to where the other group was. But eventually, they believed they might have found where they were, as they just found a giant black soap castle that towered over the lava ocean. And so they thought that this must be where the other group was, as they must have just taken a quick rest within that castle. And so that second group of intellectuals ventured into that blackstone structure, and there was still no sign of them anywhere. It was very strange, but regardless of their disappointment, they were now there in that castle. And so they decided to just take a look around this impressive structure. But little did they know, death was waiting for them right around the corner. And so they just explored this bastion, wandering through the random underground tunnels, when they came across the chest, and it had so many different luxuries, and so they began to take things out of the chest, when out of nowhere, hundreds of piglin brutes emerge from the shadows, and brutally kill every single one of them. There were no survivors. And so again, just like that first group, this group had many intellectuals that had secretly brought with them those other incomplete pieces of technology. And so again, there were just hundreds of these technology pieces lying on the floor. It was very strange for the piglin brutes to see, and so they leant down to start picking them up. But as they did, they began to glow and shake, and then the piglin brutes threw them on the floor when they began to change. And so that's how the snout trim was created. Now, the piglin brutes were very confused, as how had that just happened? But regardless, that didn't really matter to the piglin brutes, as these snout trims did look quite cool, even though on the surface they didn't seem to have any purpose. And so they decided to not get rid of them, but to instead leave them in their chest throughout the bastion as just a new treasure. And so once they were put in those chests, they were mostly left untouched for decades. However, that would change on one day when a piglin brute picks up one of these snout trims to see the details on it. But as he does that, the snout trim just disappears. And then suddenly, something in the distance began to glow brightly. This catches the attention of all the piglin brutes who decide unanimously to go and investigate whatever that glowing thing is. And so it took them a few hours, but they did eventually reach it. And when they did, they saw the Netherite Upgrade Templates. As it turns out, they had never been destroyed after all. They had just floated in the lava ocean, and had eventually somehow made their way to the coast of the lava ocean. And so again, fascinated by their out-of-worldly designs, they decided to pick them up and take them home. But unlike those other armor trims, the ones that they had picked up earlier from those intellectuals, they didn't leave these ones in chests. No, because they discovered their purpose. As while wandering home, one of them dropped one of these upgrade pendants on the netherite ingot, whilst they were holding a diamond axe. And well, when they did, that axe turned into netherite. What? How did that happen? They were all very confused, and so they threw another diamond axe, along with a netherite ingot and the upgrade pendant, and well, it worked again. This was amazing. Nothing else could do that, not in this world anyway, and the piglin brutes knew the power of netherite, and were stunned to see it in any tools. And so the piglin brutes put out an immediate order of protection for these netherite upgrading templates, as there were clearly some sort of very high-tech item that the creators would likely return for and fight for. And so it was decided by the Piglin Brutes that they would spread out these netherite upgrading templates all across the nether, and they would be stored in the safeguard right in the center of bastions throughout the nether. And so 
That's the story of what happened to the technology brought from the ancient civilization to the nether. But remember, not every intellectual fled to the nether, in fact, most of them didn't. And so, because of that, there are still tens of thousands of those magical pendants in the overworld and the end. And so, what happened to them? Well, to find that out, you'll need to watch this video.